Have you ever wondered what makes your food taste so good? As it turns out, the secret lies not just in the hands of a skilled chef, but also within the realm of science. Yes, you heard it right. Cooking, once considered solely an art, has now evolved into a fascinating discipline known as culinary science. In the past, cooking was largely about intuition and tradition. Recipes were passed down through generations, and the exact science behind why certain ingredients worked together, or why a specific technique resulted in a delicious dish, was often a mystery. But as our understanding of science grew, so did our curiosity about the science behind cooking. Culinary science, therefore, is the application of scientific principles to the practice of cooking. It's about understanding why and how certain processes happen in the kitchen. It's about exploring the chemical reactions that occur when food is cooked and how different cooking methods can affect the texture, flavor, and nutritional value of our meals. But it's not just about understanding the science behind cooking. Culinary science also involves using this knowledge to improve and innovate. It's about developing new cooking techniques, creating unique flavor combinations, and even designing kitchen tools that make cooking more efficient and enjoyable. For instance, consider the recent popularity of sous vide cooking, a technique that involves cooking food in a vacuum sealed bag at precise temperatures. This method, which relies on a deep understanding of how heat affects food, allows chefs to achieve a level of precision and consistency that was previously unimaginable. Or think about the field of molecular gastronomy, which blends cooking with laboratory techniques to create dishes that are as much about the experience of eating as they are about the food itself. Think foams, gels, and spheres that transform familiar flavors into surprising and delightful forms. So the next time you bite into a perfectly cooked steak, or savor the complex flavors of a well-made sauce, remember, there's a whole world of science that went into making that dish as delicious as it is. So, cooking isn't just an art, it's a science too. What if we told you that every time you cook, you're doing chemistry? Yes, you heard that right. Your kitchen is a beehive of chemical reactions. Let's start with the basics. The food we consume is mainly composed of three types of molecules, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Proteins are complex molecules made up of amino acids. They're like the building blocks of our body. When we cook proteins, like the juicy steak on your grill, the heat causes the proteins to unravel and then recombine, a process called denaturation. This is why the texture of a cooked steak is so different from its raw state. Carbohydrates, on the other hand, are sugars and starches. When we cook carbohydrates, like baking a loaf of bread, the heat causes the starches to break down into simpler sugars. This is why a perfectly baked loaf of bread has a slightly sweet taste. And let's not forget fats. Fats are crucial for our bodies, providing energy and helping us absorb vitamins. When we heat fats, like butter in a skillet, they start to break down into their components, glycerol and fatty acids which contribute to the rich and savory flavor that makes your food so delectable. But it's not just about the individual components. When these proteins, carbohydrates, and fats interact under heat, they undergo a series of chemical reactions. Have you ever wondered why a seared steak or a toasted bread has a brown crust and a distinct mouth-watering aroma? That's the result of the Maillard reaction a form of non-enzymatic browning where amino acids and sugars react under heat to produce hundreds of different flavor compounds. In essence, cooking is a series of precisely controlled chemical reactions. With every chop, stir, and sizzle, you're manipulating the molecular structure of your ingredients to transform them into something delicious. So whether you're a seasoned chef or a home cook, remember this. Every time you step into your kitchen, you're stepping into a chemistry lab. In essence, every kitchen is a chemistry lab. Ever wonder why your steak cooks evenly on a grill but not in a pan? The answer lies in the fascinating realm of heat transfer. This is a process that plays a pivotal role in cooking, dictating how quickly and evenly your food cooks. Heat transfer in the culinary world primarily occurs through three mechanisms, conduction, convection, and radiation. Let's break down each of these. First up, conduction the most common and direct form of heat transfer. This is what's happening when you're cooking on a stovetop. The heat from the burner heats up the pan, which then directly heats the food. 
It's like a game of hot potato, where energy is passed from molecule to molecule. This method is great for sauteing and frying, but it can lead to uneven cooking if the heat is not well distributed. Next, we have convection, a form of heat transfer that involves the movement of fluids or gases. In the kitchen, this usually means hot air, steam, or boiling water. When you're roasting a chicken in the oven or boiling pasta on the stove, convection is at work. The heat circulates around the food, cooking it evenly and efficiently. Lastly, there's radiation, which involves the transfer of heat through electromagnetic waves. This is what's happening when you're grilling a steak or toasting bread. The heat source emits waves of energy that cook the food. This method gives you that delicious char on your grilled veggies or that perfect golden brown on your toast. Each of these methods has its pros and cons, and understanding them can help you choose the right cooking technique for any given meal. Want a crispy crust on your pizza? You'll want to use conduction. Looking for a juicy, evenly cooked roast? Convection is your friend. And if you're after that perfect sear on your steak, radiation is the way to go. So, the next time you're standing in your kitchen, pondering over a recipe, remember this. Cooking isn't just an art, it's a science. And understanding heat transfer can take your cooking to the next level. Why does a slow-cooked stew taste so much better? This question brings us to the intriguing world of temperature and time in cooking. As we delve into this topic, think of cooking as an intricate dance of heat, time, and ingredients each element playing a crucial role in the final performance that is your dish. Let's talk about the science behind it. Every ingredient we use in cooking has its unique properties, and how we manipulate temperature and time can greatly affect these properties. Proteins, for instance, denature and recoagulate at specific temperatures, changing their texture and flavor. Fats melt and can even smoke if heated too much. Carbohydrates can caramelize, adding a sweet, complex flavor to your dish. So, how does this translate into a practical application? Let's take sous vide cooking as an example. This modern culinary technique allows us to have precise control over the cooking temperature, down to the degree. Imagine being able to cook a steak at exactly 54 degrees Celsius for an hour, ensuring that it's perfectly medium rare from edge to edge. Traditional cooking methods, like grilling or pan searing, don't provide this level of control. But what about time? In cooking, time can be as critical as temperature. Remember our slow-cooked stew? The reason it tastes so much better is because of the extended cooking time at a low temperature. This allows for a slow and gentle breakdown of the tough connective tissues in the meat, transforming them into gelatin that gives the stew its rich, velvety mouthfeel. In contrast, cooking the stew at a high temperature for a shorter time would result in tough, chewy meat. The proteins would denature and coagulate too quickly, squeezing out the moisture before the connective tissues have a chance to break down. So whether it's a slow-cooked stew or a perfectly medium-rare steak, the science of temperature and time in cooking is all about control. It's about understanding how heat interacts with our ingredients and using that knowledge to coax out the best possible flavor and texture. With the right temperature and time, you can create culinary magic. Did you know water can do much more than just quench your thirst? Water, a simple molecule comprising two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, holds a place of honor in the culinary world. It's not just for washing dishes or boiling pasta. It's a fundamental agent of change in the kitchen. So let's dive in and explore the wonders of water. When water heats up, it boils, turning into steam. This steamy transformation isn't just a show, it's a culinary technique, steaming. Steaming uses the heat of the steam to cook food, preserving nutrients, and keeping everything moist. It's a gentle way to handle delicate foods like fish or dumplings, allowing them to cook evenly without losing their structure or flavor. But water isn't just about gentleness. Bring it to a rolling boil, and it becomes a force to be reckoned with. Boiling is a more vigorous method, used to cook foods that need a stronger heat, like potatoes or pasta. It's also a great way to make sure food is safe to eat by killing off any lurking bacteria. Now let's talk about emulsification, a fancy word for a simple concept. Emulsification is the process of combining two liquids that normally don't mix, like oil and water. 
In the kitchen, this process gives us some of our favorite foods. Think of the creamy consistency of a well-made mayonnaise or the smooth blend of a vinaigrette dressing. That's emulsification in action. The magic of water doesn't stop at boiling, steaming, and emulsification. It's also a key player in hydration, dissolving salts and sugars, activating yeast, and contributing to the texture and flavor of countless dishes. Water is also essential for regulating temperature. It helps maintain a consistent heat in a pot or pan, preventing food from burning and ensuring it cooks evenly. In essence, water is a versatile tool in the culinary world, with its properties influencing every aspect of food, from its texture and flavor to its safety and nutritional value. Water is indeed a chef's best friend. Ever thought about the tiny organisms that help make your cheese or wine? Microbes, those invisible to the naked eye organisms, are the unsung heroes in our kitchens. They are involved in a myriad of processes that affect our food, from fermentation to spoilage and preservation. Let's start with fermentation, which is essentially a process where microbes, such as yeast and bacteria, convert sugar into other compounds like alcohol and acids. The magic of fermentation is behind many of our favorite foods and drinks. Take bread, for instance. Yeast, a type of microbe, feeds on the sugars in dough, producing carbon dioxide gas and alcohol. The carbon dioxide is what makes the dough rise, giving bread its fluffy texture. And don't forget about wine, beer, and cheese, all products of microbial fermentation. But microbes aren't just about making delicious food. They're also the culprits behind food spoilage. That's right, the mold on your bread, the slimy surface on your fruit, or the off smell in your milk. Those are all signs of microbial activity. While this might seem like a downside, it's actually a vital part of our food safety, alerting us to food that's no longer safe to eat. But here's the twist. The same microbes that can cause food to spoil can also be used to preserve it. It's all about controlling the conditions to favor beneficial microbes over harmful ones. Take pickling, for example. By creating an acidic environment, we encourage the growth of lactic acid bacteria, which help preserve the food and add that tangy flavor we all love. And let's not forget about probiotics, beneficial microbes that are good for our gut health. Foods like yogurt and sauerkraut are packed with these little guys. So the next time you bite into a piece of cheese, sip on a glass of wine, or even throw out a spoiled piece of fruit, remember the tiny microbes that made it all possible. Microbes may be small, but they play a big role in our food. Why does a combination of chocolate and strawberries taste so delicious? This question leads us into the fascinating world of flavor science. Flavor, as it turns out, isn't just about the taste. It's a complex interplay of taste, smell, texture, and even temperature. Let's start with taste. Our tongues are equipped with thousands of taste buds that can detect five basic tastes, sweet, sour, bitter, salty, and umami, a savory taste often associated with meats and broths. Each taste bud is like a lock, and the molecules in our food are the keys. When the right key fits into the lock, it sends a signal to our brain, and voila, we experience taste. But taste is only part of the story. Have you ever noticed how bland food tastes when you have a cold? That's because our sense of smell plays a crucial role in flavor perception. Our noses can detect a wide range of volatile compounds that are released when we chew our food. These compounds waft up into our nasal cavity and interact with olfactory receptors, adding depth and complexity to the flavors we perceive. Now think about biting into a crisp apple or savoring a piece of silky smooth chocolate. Texture and temperature also contribute to our overall flavor experience. The crunch of the apple, the melt of the chocolate, these tactile sensations trigger neural responses that can enhance or diminish the perceived flavor of the food. Finally, let's consider how flavors interact. Some flavors complement each other, like the sweet and sour notes in a pineapple, while others contrast, like the bitter and sweet in a piece of dark chocolate. These combinations can create complex flavor profiles that are more than the sum of their parts. So next time you bite into a delicious piece of chocolate-covered strawberry, remember the intricate dance of chemistry and sensory perception that's happening in your mouth. From the taste buds on your tongue to the olfactory receptors in your nose, every bite is a testament to the incredible science of flavor. The science of flavor is indeed a tasty topic.
What does the future hold for the culinary world? As we peer into the horizon of culinary science, we find a landscape teeming with innovation and imagination. Science continues to play a significant role in crafting new culinary tools and methods, transforming the way we perceive and experience food. Consider molecular gastronomy, a fascinating field that blends cooking with chemistry, where chefs become scientists, experimenting with textures, flavors, and presentations. Techniques like spherification, jellification, and foam creation are no longer the stuff of science fiction, but are now standard in many modern kitchens. And the advancements don't stop there. From precision cooking appliances that allow for exact temperature control to smart kitchen gadgets that can analyze the nutritional content of meals, the future of culinary science promises to be as delectable as it is intriguing. As we continue to explore the science of cooking, who knows what delicious discoveries await us in the future.